Hey everybody, it's uh, me checking in. Going to do a video today on uh, building your own heat manifold, heat transfer manifold. Uh, you can actually buy these off the internet, uh, but I kind of wanted to do a custom uh, build for, for this particular project. Uh, I'm working on the solar kiln. I'm actually checking in from inside the solar kiln. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I have 30 uh, solar vacuum tubes used for heating water. Uh, a lot of people use them on their homes. I'll be using them in the big house to do all my radiant flooring. Um, so I'll be using those vacuum tubes to actually um, boost the temperature inside the kiln. Uh, right now the kiln is hitting between uh, 90 and 120 degrees uh, just as a solar uh, the way it is right now. Uh, when I have a full stack of wood in like, like it is, uh, it's a little bit harder to get the temperatures up. I'm really shooting for 150 degrees. Uh, core temperature of the wood that's a good uh, threshold to kill kill the bugs and such so in order to do that I need to have these vacuum tubes hooked up to the kiln um, and this is what they're going to look like uh, this is uh, essentially what the, the the heat pipes connect into here um, you're going to see me in the video go ahead and do all the mill work uh, for this big piece of uh, copper uh, do all the soldering for these joints right here uh, and then talk about these different couplings uh, going from this size to this size and what the purpose is. And then additionally, once this is all finished, um, I'll show you how I pressure tested them to make sure that uh, it doesn't leak because, uh, you know, anytime you're dealing with heat and water and insulation and everything else, it's a good idea to make sure you're not leaking. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and transition into me doing the mill work for this. So. Uh, the mill work is all done at a buddy of mine's place. Um, right now I don't have enough space to have my own mill, uh, but uh, he, he actually has a mill and a lathe that work out really well for projects like this. So um, this is inside his shop. Um, it's, it's a pretty nice mill. It's got a digital readout. You'll see me kind of adjusting things here and uh, getting the, the heat, this big heat pipe set up so that I get a straight through drill. Um, and then yeah you'll just see me running the mill and what it kind of looks like you could probably do this off of a drill press um, the nice thing about the mill is that I, I do have that digital readout so I, I'm looking for a three inches on center between each sleeve so uh, that's the good thing about using the mill is I don't have to take the piece out of the vise I can go ahead and move the whole piece in one fell swoop without uh, changing the, any of the settings or anything like that so I know I'm always where I need to be uh, and the holes are evenly spaced where they need to be and then when I put this uh, piece you see me milling now when I put this piece into the racking system for hooking up these vacuum tubes uh, everything will come together nice and neat uh, and there won't be any issues with spacing or alignment or insulating the piece or you know whatever else it could be so um, go ahead and I'll let you just watch what we're doing and let you enjoy this part of the video and I'll be explaining more as the video progresses.
build. Uh, it's just a pressure test of manifold. So I got all the pieces uh, for the manifold put together. You see in the, the video prior, um, we're down to our PEX, uh, PEX connector here. So I think this is an inch and a half to three quarter to half, half to PEX. So at this point, um, like I said, uh, uh, it's finished and we need to pressure test it to make sure that uh, all my solder work works. Uh, is sealed because this this is going to be a high temp uh, application so there could be a potential for pressure uh, you know, if, not, if there's blockage or just expansion uh, I did I am putting an expansion tank in the system uh, to be care to be cognizant of that because anytime you deal with heat there's going to be pressure so uh, I'm using a coolant overflow tank I'll show you that later on in the build uh, but right now this is kind of the contraption I've rigged up to, to pressure test this. Um, this is just a tire, a tire uh, pressure thing. Usually you use it for trucking or big big trucks because it goes up to the higher PSIs. Um, a standard on load cars probably about 35 to 45 PSI. Um, this will take it all the way to 120 and show you the readout. Um, but I've also got the end of it capped. Um, this is actually air fitting. It's what I had available, so I um, uh, just went ahead and put a 3 8 inch hose uh, over top of the PEX fitting and I clamped it real, real tight with these adjustable hose clamps. Um, I'm just using this as a plug basically. After that, we just take our air hose uh, and hook it up here. Um, the good thing about this is that I can I can control how much air I give it and how fast. So if I see it leaking, I can shut it off and bleed it off or whatever. So um, that's to bleed it off, you just hold this thing, take it off, and then the you know fluid or whatever will come out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it. And this this fitting does leak. It leaks air. Well, we're not really concerned about air, uh, being that this is a water a water system. So um, that you'll probably hear that in the background. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, tilt it on its edge. Uh, I'm not really concerned about these fittings uh, leaking because you know this isn't a permanent solution right here. This is a temporary thing. So um, you'll see right here. This will show you how much psi I'm putting into it. You can see up. It's actually leaking a little bit right here. That's a bad connection. Um, but I'm able to take it up to 70 psi. And I can feel it shock loading the, um, the manifold. And I can actually feel the manifold where my fingers are. I can feel it bowing, bowing the manifold out. So I mean, 70 PSI is pretty good for this. And I'm just looking for leaks on any of the solder joints. And so far, it looks like this particular manifold is good. So I'll go ahead and disconnect everything. Here we bleed it off uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drain this back into my tub and do another another connection I'll give you a quick look at all the heat pipes I got five different ones here um, they're all the same um, I went through the same process on all of these they've all been pressure tested uh, they're all ready to go into the racking system so that'll be in a different video um, I just wanted to have this video put together uh, so you guys see the whole process uh, if you have any any suggestions like I said I'm not a plumber so um, this is the way I saw to do it and this is the way I did it so there might be a better way of doing it who knows um, but it worked out pretty nice so hopefully you enjoyed the video um, like I said if you like it like it and if you have any suggestions go ahead and leave them in the comments so with that that's kind of the end of this video uh, I'll catch you on the next one